Namaste dear students. Welcome to Diksha Online Bridge course. Subject is Physics. And today we will be discussing about the topic Work, Energy and Power. So in today's session, we will be discussing about work. When do we say work is done? Then energy. The meaning of energy. How is work and energy related? One of the type of energy is mechanical energy. We will study what are the types of mechanical energy. What is the expression for that? We will discuss about the law of conservation of energy and the meaning of power. So let's get started with work. It's a very common term in our day-to-day -day life. We come across often and on. Your parents go to work, your teacher tell you to do the homework. But according to physics, what is the actual meaning of work? The definition of work goes like this. The work is said to be done by a force. When the point on which the force is acting moves and moves in the direction of the force. I repeat, work is said to be done by a force when the point of application of the force moves in the direction of the force. That means, if this is an object, on the object a force is acting. If the force acting on the body causes a displacement in the direction of the force, then I can say, Force has done some work. The work is said to be done by the force if the point of application of the force, that is the body, moves in the direction of the force. If you look at the pick here, you see a, the cricket player is hitting the ball. So he has exerted the force, causing a displacement in the ball. So the ball is the point on which the force is acting and the force is causing some displacement. Here, the person is exerting the force on the trolley and causing a displacement. And here I have an intelligent person trying to push the wall. So on the point of action, he is exerting a force. But the displacement is equal to zero. So here, though there is a force acting on the body, the displacement equal to zero. So according to the definition of work, this gentleman has not done any work. Because the force has not caused any motion or displacement in the body. Now, if you remember, while we discussed about vectors, you had a doubt. When I have two vectors, how do I get to know, should I multiply it vectorially or should I find the scalar product? So here, you observe, force is a vector quantity, displacement is a vector quantity, and the definition says, they both should move in the same direction. So I had told the product of two vectors in the same direction is a dot product. Here I am trying to multiply two vectors in the same direction. So I should find the dot product. Hence, the work done is given by the dot product of the force and the displacement. It is the product of the magnitude of the force and the displacement in the direction of the force. So, if this is the point on which the force is acting, the force is F and the displacement also should be in the same direction and it should be equal to S. Then, you multiply their magnitude, magnitude of the force and the displacement which are both in the same direction. So, if F is equal to 10 Newton, 
and S equal to 5 meters, then the work done will be equal to 10 into 5. 10 is the magnitude of the force, 5 is the magnitude of the displacement. This will be equal to 50 joules. Now, what if the force and displacement are not in the same direction? Suppose the force is like this and the displacement is like this or the vice versa. Then if this is equal to theta, resolve S into two components. Here you are going to get S cos theta. Now you observe S cos theta and F are in the same direction. So therefore the work done will be given by mod of F mod of S into cos theta. This is the general formula for work done. Because I have found a scalar product, the right hand side will not have any direction. That is why it is a scalar quantity. The unit of this is force is Newton, displacement is meter. Put together, it is given a name as Joule. After the name of the scientist, Joule, in his honor, the unit of work done is named as Joule. J is the symbol used to represent the unit of work done. Now I want to discuss with you few special cases. Case number one. What if the force and the displacement are in the same direction? F vector and S vector are in the same direction. Then the theta value is equal to 0. Cos 0 equal to 1. Then the work done will be equal to mod of F mod of S into cos 0 that is equal to mod F into mod S. For instance, if F is equal to 10 Newton as in the previous example, S equal to 5, this will be equal to 5, uh, 10 into 5. That will be equal to 50 joules. Now case number 2. What if the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other? This is the force, this is the displacement. Now they both are at 90 degrees to each other. Then cos 90 equal to 0. So the work done will be equal to 0. So the example for this is, when a person is lifting the load, the force is acting on the load in the upward direction and he walks forward. Now the displacement and the force are perpendicular to each other. The work done by him will be equal to zero. Third case, if the force is in this direction but the displacement is in the opposite direction, theta equal to 180 degrees, cos 180 is equal to minus 1. Therefore, work done will be mod of F mod of S into minus 1. The work done will be negative. Now you get a doubt, sir work done is a scalar quantity, how is it negative? The negative sign indicates that work is done against the force. The negative sign here indicates the work is done against the force. For example, when you are climbing the hill, you are climbing vertically up by exerting the force downwards. You are pushing the floor down with the force F, but you are moving vertically upwards. 
force and displacement are in the opposite direction. Hence, in this case, we say the work done is negative. Suppose if theta equal to 60, cos 60 will be equal to 1 by 2. Suppose if your uh, force is in this direction and displacement is in this direction, this is 120 degree. Then you put cos 120, it will be equal to minus half and your answer will still be negative again. Now we move on to the next concept called as energy. Now the energy is defined as the ability to do the work or the capacity to do the work is called as energy. Energy is defined as the ability to do the work. So if they both are equivalent, the unit should remain the same. Joule is the SI unit of energy. There are different forms of energy. Solar energy, you have the uh, solar panels on the terrace for your solar water heaters. Some of you might have uh, the lights running on the solar system, solar, sorry, solar uh, energy, nuclear energy, electrical energy. These are some of the forms of the energy. Mechanical energy, the energy possessed by a body due to its position or its motion is called as mechanical energy. The energy possessed by a body due to its position or due to the property of its motion is called as mechanical energy. There are two types of mechanical energy, the potential energy and the kinetic energy. I repeat, there are different forms of energy. Among them, one of them is mechanical. The energy possessed by the body due to its position or its motion is called as mechanical energy. There are two types of mechanical energy potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, what is this potential energy? The energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position is called as potential energy. The energy stored in the body or possessed by the body due to its position is called as potential energy. For example, in the first diagram, I have an object. If you look at the case number 1, the first object is at a height equal to h1 from the ground. Whereas if you look at the object C, it is at a height h2 from the ground. So with respect to the ground, you observe their positions are different. To lift the body from the ground to a particular height, I need to do some work. To do that work, I am spending some energy. That energy is stored in this in the form of potential energy. Again, I have an object here. To lift the object and bring it to this point, I have to do some work. To do that work, I have to spend some energy. That energy is stored in this body in the form of potential energy. If you look at A and C, C is at a higher height. Therefore, the work done to lift this is more compared to this. That means the energy possessed by C 
is more than the energy possessed by A. We say the potential energy of C is greater than the potential energy of A. Now this is due to the position. Now look at a bow and arrow. So in the bow there is a string. There is a string like this. When I keep an arrow and pull the string back, now the string has come like this, come like this. Like in the case of the ball here, the string did not move up, but in the same place it has been stretched. Now due to this, there is a displacement from its original position to the new position. This also should possess some energy. This is not due to the position but due to the configuration, due to the change in the shape, due to the change in the dimension of the body. To change the dimension, I have to do some work. To do that work, I am spending some energy. That energy is stored in the body in the form of potential energy. This is potential energy by position. This is potential energy by configuration. Now can you tell me some, some more example of uh, potential energy by configuration? When you take a rubber band and you are trying to uh, put it somewhere, you have to stretch it. You have a balloon. When you blow the air, to blow the air, you are doing some work, spending some energy that is stored in the form of potential energy due to configuration. Now, what is the expression for the potential energy? Suppose this is the ground. This is the object. The mass of the object is equal to m. Now to lift the object, I need to exert a force F. I exert a force vertically upwards and take it to a position, say here. So this distance is equal to H. So in my problem, the displacement S vector has a magnitude equal to h, height. What about the force? What is the magnitude of the force? No, I have to lift the body like this. To lift it, who is opposing it? The gravity is opposing. I am supposed to do the work against the gravity. So the gravitational force will be equal to m into g. I have to exert an equal and opposite amount of the force mg in the upward direction. So, the earth was exerting this much of a force, I should exert an equal and opposite amount of the force m into g. Here, these two are in the opposite direction. If I take this plus, I should take this minus. But in my problem, I am exerting this force and the displacement are in this direction. So mg and h both are in the same direction. So I will not take the minus sign and moreover I am taking only the magnitude. So therefore, I can write it as m into g. From the work done formula, work done is equal to f vector dot s vector into cos theta. f is m into g, s is equal to h because the force that I am exerting mg and h both are in the same direction, theta equal to 0, cos 0 equal to 1. The work done will be given by the formula mg into h. Now to do this work, I have spent some energy. 
so work and energy are equivalent in this case therefore i replace this w with e e is equal to mg into h sometimes this is also written as u to represent the potential energy this is the formula for potential energy m g into h so what i understand from this is to lift a heavier object larger the mass i do more work it will store more energy suppose you want to throw a tennis ball vertically upwards or a shot put vertically upwards so this is the tennis ball this is a shot put the mass of the shot put is more mass of the tennis ball is less so you need to do less work for this more work for this when you do more work you spend more energy if they are pushed to the same height because the mass is more this will possess more potential energy suppose you have the same body thrown to different height so the mass of this and the mass of this is the same both are thrown to the same height sorry the one of them is thrown to a larger height h2 this is to a height h1 because h2 is greater than h1 this will possess more potential energy this will possess lesser potential energy so according to the formula as the height keeps on increasing the potential energy possessed by the body will also keep on increasing now kinetic energy it is the energy possessed by the body by virtue of its motion the energy possessed by the body due to the property of its motion is called as kinetic energy you observe a car in motion then the billiards ball when you exert a force on one of them the others will start moving the force on this will get transferred to this the next one the next one and they start moving force is causing a displacement and due to the displacement the body is in motion the energy due to that motion is called as kinetic energy now what is the expression for kinetic energy it is equal to half m into v square now let me consider an object here which is initially at rest u equal to 0 let a force f equal to mass into acceleration act on the body and change its velocity to v after a distance equal to s meters on covering a displacement of s meter the body gains a velocity equal to v therefore i can write v square equal to u square plus 2a into s the body started from rest u square equal to 0 so v square equal to 2a into s i will send 2s to the other side or uh, i can multiply by half m on both sides half m into v square is equal to half m 2a into s 2 2 will get cancel half m v square is equal to m into a into s m into a is nothing but force s is displacement force into displacement force into displacement is nothing but work to do this work i have spent some energy that energy itself is the kinetic energy this is the expression for kinetic energy now instead of uh, multiplying by half m on both side you can also find an expression for a 
a is equal to from this equation a can be written as v square divided by 2s now write in the expression for work done w is equal to force instead of force mass into acceleration instead of displacement s yes. this will be m instead of a v square by 2s into s s and s will get cancelled this will be equal to half m into v square this also can be a method of deriving an expression for kinetic energy so now can you all share me uh, with me some examples for uh, the potential energy possessed by the body kinetic energy possessed by the body yes when you climb a mountain and go up you get the potential energy when you are running you are in motion you have kinetic energy so any body in motion will have kinetic energy for example a truck moving an aeroplane moving they all have kinetic energy but here i have a another example so here a girl is climbing the stairs and she reaches a particular height after reaching a particular height you observe she is not standing she is still continuing to run therefore she has potential energy due to the position here at this position the potential energy was equal to zero because she climbed a particular height she gained the potential energy along with that after reaching there she is not at rest she is in motion so she also has kinetic energy this can be an example for a body possessing both potential energy and kinetic energy for example a truck or a car climbing the flyover because its height is increasing it is having potential energy because it is in motion it will have kinetic energy that is why you observe when a vehicle is negotiating a hill trying to climb up the hill as it is moving up the engine has to do two work one to keep it in motion the second one to increase the height so the capacity of the engine a part of it is getting used to rise the height hence many a times the velocity will decrease so some bodies have only potential energy some have only kinetic energy there can be cases where the body possesses both potential as well as kinetic energy now the conservation of energy mass is one of the fundamental property possessed by a body you can neither create it or destroy it in the same way the energy possessed by a body also cannot be created or destroyed it can only be converted from one form to the other the energy possessed by a body can only be transferred from one body to the other or can be converted from one form to the other here if you look at the chemical energy produced here chemical energy can be converted into electrical energy for example your cell ever ready cell or the duracell battery where the chemical energy gets converted into electrical energy and electrical energy may get converted into the light energy wind energy in the fan etc chemical energy can also be converted into mechanical energy 
then the chemical energy can be converted into electrical energy that can be utilized to run a car electric car for example there the electrical energy gets converted into one of the mechanical energy that is the kinetic energy then you have the lift the lift the electrical energy is converted into the potential energy when we eat the food there is a chemical bonding between the atoms or the molecules present in the food that gets converted into mechanical energy so if you drink boost complan horlicks etc what energy they tell you are going to get is the uh, uh, mechanical energy so what i want you all to understand is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one form to the other one of the best example is if i have a object raised to a particular height h at a particular height h it has a potential energy equal to mg into h when i drop it it keeps falling down as it is falling down you observe the height should keep on decreasing if the height decreases the potential energy will also decrease so where did the energy go it is observed in the form of the velocity of the body as it is falling down the velocity will keep on increasing the body gains the kinetic energy on reaching the ground the entire of the potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy so there is a conservation of energy the energy is converted from one form to the other if you remember we had plotted a graph of height versus potential energy so in the ground height equal to 0 potential energy is 0 when the height is equal to 1 meter potential energy will be more when the height equal to 2 meters the potential energy will be even more the equation is a straight line passing through the origin but when the height equal to 0 you observe the body possesses kinetic energy the kinetic energy will be maximum as the height keeps on increasing the kinetic energy will keep on decreasing that is why the graph of kinetic energy will be like this so at this particular height you observe the kinetic energy will be equal to the potential energy here at this particular height and the sum of these two will always remain the same that is called as total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy the sum will remain the constant now we move on to the next concept called as power power is defined as the rate of doing work rate in the sense we are going to consider the time taken to do the work suppose now the homework is been assigned to all of you and you are expected to solve it by 5 pm most of you are submitting it by 5 pm but some you take your own sweet time so there is a time constraint given to do the work that work done with respect to the time is called as power power is defined as the rate at which the work has been done power is equal to work done divided by time taken or it is also defined as the energy spent or produced per unit time when i make time equal to 1 the energy or the work done 
per unit time will be equal to power. If you look at the uh, two people who are running on the stairs, suppose if this is the ground, this is the staircase, two of them, A and B, are climbing the stairs. They both reach the top of the tower. This is A. To climb this height, A will take 5 seconds. To reach the same point, B will take a time equal to 8 seconds. If you observe here, both are climbing the same height. And if both A and B are having the same mass, work done by both of them will be equal to mg into h. Work done shall remain the same. But the time taken by A is less, the time taken by B is more. We will find that A is more drained out with energy, taking deeper breaths, whereas B walks aram say is relaxed uh, not taking deep breaths so what is the difference both of them did the same work but a completed the given task in a shorter time the power consumed or spent by that person will be more so if you look at the power consumed by a will be mg into h divided by 5 whereas b is equal to mgh divided by 8. This will be more compared to this. This rate of doing the work is called as power. The one which completes the given task in a shorter time is said to have consumed more power. Even while uh, you drive your car, Suppose you travel a distance of uh, 50 kilometers in a shorter time. When you cover the distance in a shorter time, you consume more power. The efficiency of the engine will decrease. The fuel consumption will be more. The power generated will be more. What is the unit of power? The unit of power is bad. Power is work done divided by time. Work done is in joule, time is in second. Both put together, the SI unit is Watt. It is named after the scientist Watt. So, the unit is in SI system is Watt. Again, work done is scalar. Time is a scalar quantity. Therefore, the power is also a scalar quantity. Many a times we come across higher values of Watt or power. Then we can also write Watt depending on the values. 1 Watt is equal to 1 Joule per second. If I have kilowatt, kilo means 10 power 3. 1 kilowatt is equal to 10 power 3 Watts. 1 megawatt, mega means 10 power 6. 1 megawatt is equal to 10 power 6 watt. The symbol used to write mega is capital M. So, if I say 5 megawatt, so this can be written as 5 into 10 power 6 watt. Sometimes the power is also represented in terms of horsepower. One horsepower is equal to 746 Watt. So they may ask in the exam, they will give you a multiple choice question, which of the following is also a unit of power? Horsepower is also the unit of power. One horsepower is equal to 746. 46 Watt. So my dear students, let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed so far. So in this session, 
we wanted to discuss about work, energy and power. First, we understood what is the definition of work. The work is said to be done by a force when the force causes a displacement in the direction of the force. The product of the force and the displacement which are both in the same direction gives you the work done. Suppose force is 10 Newton, displacement is 5 meter, both of them are acting in the same direction, work done will be 10 into 5 that is equal to 50 joules. You just multiply their magnitudes if force and displacement are in the same direction. If they are not in the same direction, then you need to use this formula F into S into cos theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors force and displacement. You need to be careful while choosing the angle theta. Suppose if F and theta have an angle theta between the F and S have an angle theta between them, substitute here. Sometimes they will give F like this and S like this. Remember, theta is not the angle here. This is wrong. Theta here is the angle between their direction. If this is F, this is your S, then the direction of F is like this, the direction of S is like this, the angle between their direction will be equal to theta. Not, it's not always this angle, the angle between them may be wrong or may not be uh, correct. So therefore, always remember the technique to find the angle is the angle between their directions. This is always correct. Then we discussed about some cases where the force and displacement are in the same direction you put theta equal to 0. When force and displacement are perpendicular to each other, theta equal to 90. When they are opposite to each other, theta is 180. You get the negative sign for work done. That doesn't mean it is a work, uh, vector quantity. It just goes to say that work is done against the force. For example, when you lift a load, and climb up, force acts downwards, displace, displacement will be in the upward direction. Then we discussed about energy, the ability of a body to do work or the capacity to do work is called as energy. You can always equate the work to the energy. So, if the unit of work is joule, the unit of energy will also be equal to joule. And energy is also a scalar quantity. There are different forms of energy. Solar energy, nuclear energy, electrical energy and many more. I have just given few examples. One of the type of energy is mechanical energy. The energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position or by its motion is called as mechanical energy. The energy possessed by a body by its position is called as potential energy. Due to its motion, the ener mechanical energy is called as kinetic energy. In potential energy, there are two types due to the position. When you keep lifting the ball to different heights, the position will keep on changing, the potential energy will keep on changing. The energy due to configuration, like in the case of elastic bodies, when you stretch them, their position is not changing but their configuration is changing. Then the expression for potential energy is mg into h. Suppose when I lift a body from the ground to a particular height h, gravity was pulling it down with a force equal to m into g, I have to exert an equal amount of force in the 
opposite direction. What happens if I exert more force compared to m into g? If this was 10 Newton, what happens if I exert 12 Newton force? When I exert 12 Newton, 10 will be used to raise the height. The remaining 2 will be in the form of kinetic energy. So we are not worrying about kinetic energy. We speak only about the potential energy. That is why I just take an amount of uh, force which is equivalent to the m into g value. Then instead of f, I will substitute it as m into g. Instead of s as height, I get this formula for work done to lift the body. Work and energy are equivalent. So the expression for potential energy will be mg into h. The energy possessed by a body due to its motion is called as kinetic energy. Larger the speed, larger will be the kinetic energy. So what we do is we consider a body at rest. The force acts on the body and it attains a velocity v on traveling a distance equal to s meter. From the equation of motion, I get v square equal to 2as. Here, write, convert it into a equal to v square by 2as. In the formula for work done, instead of force, mass into acceleration and instead of a, v square by 2s, I get this equation. There may be some objects which possess both potential as well as kinetic energy, like in this case where a girl started from the ground floor, went to a particular height and still continue to run. At a particular height possesses potential energy due to the motion kinetic energy. Then we spoke about conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You can transfer it from one body to the other body. Here are some examples where chemical energy is transferred to uh, other forms like electrical energy and electrical to light energy. Then the capacity, the rate at which the work is done, the work done divided by time, the rate at which the work is done or the energy spent or produced per unit time is called as power. Power is rate of doing work. Power is equal to work done divided by time. If the time interval is very, very small, you can write power is equal to dW divided by dt, rate of doing work. The SI unit of this is Watt. When you have higher values of power, 1 kilowatt can be written as 10 power 3, mega is 10 power 6. The other unit of power is horsepower. 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So this is about today's discussion about the topic work energy and power. So we will catch up after a few moments to solve few more problems. And this is the task for you. You can spend some time recollecting your first, the first toy that you had, the first pen that you can remember that you possessed, your first bicycle and etc. So that's it from me. Thank you all. Take care. Have a good day.